Francine Reynolds has been the artistic director of New Stage Theatre since 2006 and a theatre artist for over 30 years. Recently, she has directed the plays Shakespeare in Love, Silent Sky, Beauty and the Beast, Best of Enemies, Our Town, Red, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and A Time to Kill. Previously, she has worked as a locations casting director for many years, and originally, she is from the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, but now resides in Jackson with her husband, Chuck. I'm Francine Thomas Reynolds, and I spent most of my adult life working as a theater artist. I'm currently employed as the artistic director of New Stage Theater, which is a professional theater located in Jackson, Mississippi. And the great thing about my job is that it enables me to do the thing I love to do most in the world, and that is direct and produce plays for the stage, for a live audience. As a director, I see the process from the beginning to the end. I am responsible for the creative interpretation of a piece, and I'm responsible for marshalling all the practical applications you need to get that piece up on the stage. Um, from pre-production meetings with designers to casting, through the performances, the, the final performances, I'm involved in every aspect of playmaking. Now, don't get me wrong. It is a very collaborative process from uh, stage managers to crew, production crew to designers to all actors. Everyone has a part in making a play. Although I enjoy all parts of the creative and artistic process, one of my favorite things to do is to get into the rehearsal hall to see how the actors and musicians and music directors and choreographers can work together to map out the production for the actors. I love to create shapes. I love to use our set pieces, our actors to create visual things on the stage that the audience can relate to. I like to work with the staging of the production so that the blocking is very clear to the actors and to the audience who gets to see the play. As a theatrical director, I like to explore all genres. One of my favorite things to do is to do the research before we even begin the process and to share that research with the company. If it is an historical play, we apply that research directly to the play. And if it's not, we incorporate the research into the process in several different ways. I think there are several things that make for a successful director, and some of those things are a list of goals I have before I start each process. The goals are organization. It's important to maintain an organized schedule so the company of actors is never confused about what is expected from them. You know, there's this idea that artists and artistic people are sometimes not organized or they're flighty, um, disorganized, and I think there's nothing farther from the truth. I've always found that artists are very intentional about their time and their communication. Another goal is collaboration. I talked about collaboration before, but a good production really depends on it. Sometimes there could be creative friction when um, people who have real strong views and opinions and artistic visions get together to create one thing together, but through the collaborative process, we usually work through all of that friction and we create something that is, I think, wonderful for an audience to see. Another goal is great storytelling. I mean, it's why we're in the room. It's why we do the plays. We want to tell stories. And I think it's real important that everybody involved in the process be aware of the elements of a story, not just the actors, but everybody in the company. Another goal I have is inclusion. It's important that all stakeholders are involved in the process from administrative to backstage to the actors. If everybody knows the points of the story, if everybody knows why we are telling the story, I think it can create a better story. Another goal I have is specificity. Um, it's real important to really hone in on moments of a play. It's really important to be specific. For instance, if you're doing a historical play and you have something like a television, you need to be really specific about how the television looked in the 1950s, if it's a play that takes place in the 1950s. And those kind of specifics 
although the audience may not recognize every little thing about a play, they go to making the story as a whole believable. Spectacle. Now, spectacle doesn't always mean bells and whistles. It means creating a visual for the audience to see. And I think it's really important to define that spectacle. Unity. A clear, con a clear concept is something that's really important to unify a project. And that's where a director's job really comes in to play at the beginning of the process. If a director has a clear vision and a clear concept, they will be able to communicate that to the company. And that will also result in what I think is a great production. Some of the most challenging type of plays to direct are also my favorite type of plays, and those are historical plays. And what makes those challenging is things from the cast, <laughs> because sometimes you have to cast people who the audience knows and who are very familiar with. Um, sometimes the figures are iconic. Sometimes there are huge casts to tell history plays. The other thing that is challenging about a history play is that they're predictive. People think they know the story. People think they know the outcome of the plot. Another thing that's challenging is the idea of spectacle because historical plays are often epic in nature. They take place over a course of a large amount of time instead of 24 hours and they often involve really important events in our history and you have to figure out how do you tell that huge moment on a stage in two hours or three hours so that's very challenging and those type of things that are challenging are also the things about a play and about an historical play that I find the most fun to direct the telling of Big events, environmental events, sometimes are part of telling a history play. For example, I just recently directed Hell in High Water, a play written by Marcus Gardley about the Great Flood of 1927 and its impact on Greenville, Mississippi. Well, part of the play involved the actual flooding event, and I thought, now how in the world are we going to convey that on the stage? And what we did is we worked with Vasti Jackson, a blues musician who composed a soundscape and a score for the show, and he eventually per personified the river. So through sound and movement, which was choreographed by Tiffany Jefferson, we were able to portray the flood. And it was really fascinating um, and fun to do. And through the use of projection and lighting effects, we were really able to portray the power of of the Mississippi River. Helen High Water is an example of a type of play that can illustrate history in a way that makes for new discoveries for the audience. Because of the African American citizens stranded on the levee and the treatment they received from town leaders, many migrated up north and Greenville was never the same. The play laid out Mississippi's role in the beginning of our country's great migration. Some of the play's harshest lines were taken from historical records and Will Percy's book, Lanterns on the Levee. We brought in students from Greenville High School and to see the play, and um, it was really exciting to see their response to it and to, for them to learn things about their town that they weren't aware of. So providing a sense of identity is one reasons why one of the reasons why I like to direct history plays. I'm very committed to producing history plays because I believe they can provide a unique lens which links our past to the present, explores our common heritage, and illuminates our understanding of what it means to be an American. I have directed plays that illuminate historical events, people, places, social issues, and I believe these are the types of plays that can enrich our cultural life. History is passing along stories of what other people have done, how they lived, and how we can learn from them. In art, the universal can become very specific and can have great impact. The redescribing of acts makes them very real, and a theatrical moment can really have a lot of power much more than what I think just the statement of facts. I think it's really important to tell stories that are sometimes hard to hear. I think there is a responsibility to recount experiences as they happened. Slavery happened, the Holocaust happened. No matter how deeply you dive into the creative process, certain things are true even if people don't want to face them. I think it's really important that 
by telling history on the stage that we are contributing to preserving these stories. Some audiences may not want to confront history, may not want to be confronted by topic or stories that unsettle them in personal ways. In Mississippi, some audiences don't want to revisit the racial strife we have had in our past. Um, and, and I receive comments from people like, um, I don't want to see social issue plays. I don't want to revisit that dark history. But I found that when they do come to the play, they are often surprised by their own response. Because history plays involve big moments and are saga-like, I have been able to grow as a theater artist. I have learned more about creating spectacle. I've learned more about portraying iconic, iconic figures on the stage. And it really just excites me that I hope I get to have more opportunities to direct plays like the ones that I have directed in the past. Because history plays involve big moments and are saga-like, I have been able to grow as an artist. I have been able to use varying production elements to create spectacle and sometimes paint the stage, if you will. So why do I believe it is important to direct history plays and why do I love them so much? I really think that they can change hearts and minds and the things that I talked about. They help us to understand society. They can help us to understand change. They can inspire us. I think they can make us better people. They preserve stories. They teach us warning signs. They can create enthusiasm and they can open up doors to people and events you may not have known about.